uh, to the book of Psalms. Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Remember, we're taking a detour from our current series, we, uh, which is the ministry of Jesus Christ, and we are going to preach a message on Thanksgiving. Amen? Yeah. A message on Thanksgiving. This is that message, Psalms 103, uh, the first five verses. Let us all stand when you have it. Psalms 103. And the first five verses, and let's see what we have here. I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Very familiar passage of scripture for those who, who knows this verse. Uh, it, it reads as follows, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to use for a subject just for a few minutes. Bless God because he first blessed you. Bless God because he first blessed you. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for allowing us this opportunity to preach to your people. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, allow us to open up our spiritual understanding that we may receive your word, that we may place it in our hearts, and Lord, let it make a mark on us that can never be erased. Allow us to tell the dying world that Jesus Christ is Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless God because he first blessed us. Remember, but once again, we're taking a detour from our current series, and we're talking about this Thanksgiving because this Thursday is Thanksgiving. Now, Thanksgiving is not a religious holiday. It is a national holiday. It's a day that they said the pilgrims had their first uh, Thanksgiving with uh, uh, those who came over on the Mayflower. So that was the, the tradition of Thanksgiving. It is not a religious holiday. But you know that we come to church every Sunday and give God thanks Amen. for everything that he has done for us. We don't have to wait once a year to tell the Lord thank you. But it's good. It's good to go back. And I love this Psalms to think back on what God has done for us. And in this Psalm, and David wrote this Psalm, King David that is, in this Psalm, David calls upon his body, his mind, his soul, and his spirit to join in one great symphony and bless God and give God praise and give God thanks for all of his benefits. Now, looking, before we can look at the blessings that we should see from God, and that's found in verse 3 through 5, he lists some blessings that we can thank God for. Let's look at verse 1 and 2 and see why we are blessing God. And what, what is this? What does this mean to bless God? Look at verse 1 again. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Question, how do you bless God? And what does it mean to bless God? How can you, uh, when we think about bless, we think about God doing things for us. We think about God healing us. We think about God giving us material things. So how do you give something to someone who has everything? How do you give something to someone who doesn't need any healing, who doesn't need anything, so evidently we can't give God stuff, we can't give God material things, so how do you bless God? Here is King David saying, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So the only thing that's left is giving God thanks. Giving God praise. So how do you bless God? You bless God by thanking him for what he's done for you. You bless God by thanking him for everything he has given you. This is how you bless the Lord. You thank him. 
And that's easier said than done. Even throughout our busy days and our busy schedule, people don't take the time out to give God praise. They don't take the time out to tell the Lord, thank you for everything you have done for me. Not only did he say this, he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. So in other words, not only should you say with words, thank you, God. Not only should you say with words, I give you appreciation, God. You got to bless the Lord with everything you have. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul. Now stop right there, O my soul. So. Soul can be used interchangeably. Soul could refer to the physical body, or it can refer to the spirit man on the inside. But because he said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, the context here about your soul, it refers to the body. So in other words, he's saying, I'm going to bless God, I'm going to thank God with all of my body. With, with every part of my body, I'm going to bless him. So when he says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, I'm going to give God praise with my eyes. I'm going to give God praise with my hands. I'm going to give God praise with every part of my body. But because he said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, meaning his physical body, he didn't leave anything out because he says, bless the Lord, oh my body, and all that is with so not only am I going to praise him on the outside, I'm going to praise him with everything on the inside. What are you talking about? Praise him with everything on the inside. Well, bless the Lord, not just with your hands, not just with shouting, not just with dancing. Bless the Lord with all that is within you. How do you do that? You can bless the Lord through your conscience. Yeah, you can bless the Lord by your unwavering faith in him. You can bless the Lord with your judgment that the next time you make a decision, you're going to go to his word first. That's how you thank God. You bless the Lord or thank God by your judgment. You can bless God with your imagination. How come you can't see yourself doing what God wants you to do? Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Let your affection praise him by loving whatsoever God loves. Let your desires bless him by saying, Lord, whatever desire I have, it's going to be your desire. So bless the Lord with all that is within me. Let your memory bless him. That means this, you're not forgetting what God has done for you in the past. Every time you think, you look back at the past. You look back at 2012 and 2011 and you see how God blessed you and you keep on praising him one more time. I wish I had some help here today. Anybody know how to bless the Lord? Do you know how to tell the Lord thank you? Yeah, yeah. This Thursday we're going to eat turkey and a ham and we're going to eat all that and we're going to say that little prayer but you need to bless the Lord today. You ain't got to wait till Thursday because I know somebody this Thursday not going to have a turkey to eat. Somebody not gonna eat like you eat. Somebody not gonna celebrate like you celebrate. So you need to bless the Lord right now. Yeah, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that with that is within me. Let your thoughts bless him by meditating on him. Watch this. Let your hope bless him. How's my hope gonna bless him? Because I'm, I'm hoping one day that the rapture gonna take place and he's gonna take me on home with him. You see, even in my hope, I'm blessing him. I'm thanking God for future things because I know that God is going to bless me even in the future. So yes, yes, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And he says, bless the Lord oh my soul and all. You don't want to miss anything about yourself. You don't want to take anything out about yourself in praising God and giving God praise. Yes, amen, amen. Listen to this. Uh, not only does verse 1 say that, verse 1 also brings out three points. It brings out these three points. You should, verse 1, because he says, bless the Lord. He's talking to himself. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. He's talking to himself. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. What is he saying? You gotta have a conversation with yourself. 
Sometimes, yo, when you wake up in the morning, you need to talk to yourself. This is David talking to himself and saying, bless the Lord. Self, you need to bless the Lord. Now, watch this. It's okay to talk to yourself. Just don't answer yourself. Now, when you start answering your own question, something wrong. <laughs> Some roads you start asking. You can talk to yourself. You got to talk to yourself. When you talk to yourself, you tell yourself, self, you need to thank God for waking you up this morning. Self, thank God for starting you on your way. Self, thank God for being in your right mind. I can't, I can't understand. I work in a school system, and I can't understand. Sometimes I see young people that come to the door. I stand right there in the front of the door, and I greet every every student as they come in the door. And sometimes these kids have some mean looks on their on their faces early in the morning. They gotta be at school seven thirty in the morning. I'm there seven o'clock in the morning, and I say, "Smile, what's so good about it? Ain't nothing to smile about." I said, you woke up this morning and you walked through those doors by yourself. That's good enough. How could you wake up? I'm not a morning person. I'm a mean person in the morning time. Well, what if God would have kept that frown on your face all day? Telling you a mean person, don't talk to me in the morning. Wait a minute. He woke you up this morning. You didn't have to get up this morning. You could be laying in your bed. You could be sick on your sick bed. But God woke you up this morning. I don't care how bad it is in your life. I don't care what situation you're going through. God's been good to you. Oh yes, oh yes, bless the Lord because he first blessed you. So, you see, when you have a conversation with yourself in the morning, bless the Lord, oh my soul, it moves to the next step. After you have a conversation with yourself, you need to counsel yourself. He says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. What, what am I counseling myself about? You need to counsel yourself to tell yourself you need to serve the creator of the universe. You need to counsel yourself and say, God, today I self, I'm going to do what God wants me to do, not what the world wants me to do. You see, after you talk to yourself, you talk to yourself, it leads to counseling yourself, and after you counsel yourself, guess what you have done? You have encouraged yourself. You see, wait, let me say that again. You talk to yourself so you can counsel yourself. When you counsel yourself about God, you encourage yourself. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. When you begin to talk about how good God is, instead of watching that television, because you know, television is very depressing, especially the first thing we turn on when we turn on the TV is the news. I can't stand turning on the news. You know, I, I turn on the news so I can see what the traffic is like. I turn on the news so I can see what the weather is like. But it seems like before I get to the weather and the traffic, I heard about five people got shot. See, that's, I, I don't want to hear that the first thing I woke when I wake up in the morning. When you wake, see, that puts you in a depressive state. So you got to talk to yourself so you can encourage yourself. Say, Father, as I walk out of my house today, please put your arm and protection around me. You need to be praying for your children as they go to school. You need to pray for your husband and your wife as they leave that house. Because God is the only one that can protect you. Yeah. So not only did he say in verse 1, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You know what bless his holy name means? It's just like the Lord's prayer when Jesus says, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, God's name is holy. God's name is to be praised. God's name is holy. So bless his name. When you wake up in the morning, you should talk to yourself and say, God, you're holy and righteous. No matter what evilness is happening in the city of Detroit, you are still holy. People wonder why when I go to work, how come every time I see you, Mr. Elon, you always got a smile on your face? Because God has been good to me. Yeah, I, I may be sick. Yeah, some problem may be going on in my family, but guess what? God is still good. It doesn't. The evilness in the world doesn't overshadow the goodness that God has done in your life. Bless the Lord. Because he first blessed you. Then he goes into verse 2. He says it again in verse 2. He repeats himself in verse 2. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. But then he adds this. 
forget and forget not all his benefits. Uh, listen to this. In verse 2, he's telling us, listen, how easy is it for us to forget what God has done for us? Why would he even have to say that? Why would he even have to say, forget not his benefits? That's because when we go out each day, for some reason, let a week go by, and we don't read the word, and we don't pray, we forget about what God has done for us. You see, the more you forget about what God has done for you, the more it's easy for you to fall into sin. You see, the more, that's why you got to encourage yourself. That's why you got to talk to yourself. That's why you got to counsel yourself. Because that keeps you away from what the devil has planned for you. I mean, you know that the devil got a plan for you. You didn't even know that. Yes, he does. God has a plan for you, but the devil got one for you too. You, you, you don't believe me. Jesus told Peter, he says, Peter, the devil desires to sift you like we. Peter didn't even know that until Jesus told him. He said, what? He after me? Yes, he's after you. He wants to get you, Peter. And I'm here to tell you, born again believers, the devil is after you. He has a plan after you. The Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So guess what you need to do? Forget not all his benefits. If you got God on your mind, if you got Jesus on your mind, you don't have to worry about what the enemy's planned for you because God says all things work together for the good of them that love God. So, so how do I do this? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. How can I not forget all what God has done for me? Oh, well, the Bible says this. This is how you do it. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. You see, if your thinking is wrong, your living will be wrong. Let me say that again. If your thinking is wrong, your living is going to be wrong. You see, the reason you live the way you live is because you think the way you think. Change your thinking and your lifestyle will change. See, uh, you, you know, what, what's insanity? You know, some people, exercise people say, insanity is this, doing the same thing over and over and over again, thinking you're going to get different results. Here you're eating Big Macs, and you're eating uh, Frosties, and you're eating all this stuff, and you think you're going to lose some weight. That's insane. How in the world are you gonna lose weight and you do you haven't changed nothing in your schedule? You haven't changed nothing, you don't exercise, you don't do anything. Yeah, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds in 2014. You gonna gain 50 pounds in 2014. Keep eating the way you eat. So that's insane. He says, watch this. He says, if you don't think differently, then your lifestyle won't change. So in order to forget not all his benefits, you got to think on good things. You got to think about how good God has been. That's the only way you're going to change. But you know, Reverend Bell, I found out that people, they can recite and they can think about what's on that new TV show called Scandal. They can run down Scandal down to me. They can tell you what Carrie Washington did last episode, the first episode. They can tell me what she did last season. Carrie Washington don't even know who they are, but they can tell me everything about the television shows. Some young people can tell me everything that a rapper said on every song, but they can't tell me how good God has been to them. Some young people, when I tell them I'm at school, they, they say, this work is too hard. I say, well, what, what do you mean it's too hard? Because when I see you walking down the hall with your headphones in your ear, you, you're reciting every rap song that you think you can think of. I said, the same initiative that it takes you to learn that rap song is the same initiative for you to learn that ABCs and that 10 plus 10. That, that, that's what you need to take. And it's the same way spiritually. If you want to see change in your spiritual life, you've got to think on good things. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So that's verse 1 and verse 2. Then after, after you think on these things, guess what? He begins to talk about five blessings. So guess what? If you can't think of anything to thank God for, Paul, David says, let me start you off. I got five. I got five. Five things that you can thank God for. Look at number verse 3. Here's the first one. Verse 3 says, in Psalms 103, here's the first blessing you can thank God for. Who forgives all your iniquities. Stop right there. Number one. Do we serve a forgiving God? 
Do we serve a God that can forgive you? Now, now notice he didn't say who forgives some of your sins. He didn't say forgive those partial sins. It says who forgives all of your iniquities. There's no mistake in it. God offers forgiveness. But the reason why people don't receive forgiveness is because they don't want to do the necessary thing to get forgiveness. What, what, what is it that we have to do to get forgiveness? You got to repent of your sins, turn from your wicked ways, and then line your life up with God and then you can't see forgiveness. Watch this. God God, when God cancels a man's sin, he does so according to the measure in which Christ bore those sins. So as, as Christ bore those sins, that's how much God will forgive your sin. So let's just see, how did, he, how did he bear my sin? He put them all on himself. He took every sin that you committed, every past sin, present sin, and future sin was nailed on Jesus Christ at the cross. How wide is God's forgiveness? His, he loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross. He shed his blood for you. Now, notice this. Jesus' blood doesn't cover your sins. Jesus' blood washes your sins away. Let me say that again. The blood of animals, like the, the, the Israelites people had to do, that blood, the blood of animals, covered their sins. But the blood of Jesus don't cover your sins. It get rid of your sins. So, when you put your faith in Christ, this is what God does with your sins. The Bible says he throws your sins like he, he gets rid of your sins like your sins were thrown in the sea of forgetfulness. Some researcher did, a, some person thought, uh, who's a researcher, uh, said that if God throws our sins in the deepest oceans, then that's a good place to throw them. Because he said, listen, there, there's some deep parts in, in the ocean that if you go to the deepest oceans in the world, uh, a submarine could try to go down there and they couldn't get down there. It would, it would crush like a, a Pepsi can. Anything that goes trying to get to the deepest won't even make it. So when he says God throws, your sins in the sea of forgiveness, that means can't nobody go and retrieve them? Can't nobody bring your sins back against you? When you're forgiven, you're forgiven. You see, it's us that don't want to forgive one another. It's, it's us that keeps bringing up, I remember you 10 years ago. I remember what you did. See, we don't want to forget. I'll forgive you, but I won't forget you. Now see, no, that's not what the Bible says. When you for, when God forgave you, He got rid of your sin. See, you don't believe that because see, some of y'all still asking God for forgiveness of what you did in 1977, and some of y'all weren't even born in 1977. And you said, Lord, I, I'm really sorry for what I did. Listen, when you accepted Christ, everything that you did in the past is gone. God is looking at you. What are you talking about? What sin are you bringing before me? When my son died on the cross and you accepted that, every sin has been washed away. That brings up this point. I can't understand why people won't get saved. I just can't understand it to save my life. Maybe it's not for me to understand. Who wouldn't go to a God that will wipe your slate clean? Who wouldn't go to a God that would give you a brand new start? Who wouldn't go to a God that would say, I'll let you into my heaven. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past because I washed it with my son's blood. I cleaned you up. And all you got to do is line up with the word of God today and you're on your way to heaven. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like like that. Bless God because he first blessed you. Okay, that, that's not a good enough uh, blessing for you. Let's look at, look at the second blessing. Part B of verse 3. Not only would God forgive you of your sins, who heals all diseases. Wait a minute. Some of you say, well, I'm sick right now. If it says God going to heal all diseases, how come I'm not healed right now? Evidently, he's not referring to just physical sickness. What he's referring to is spiritual sickness. You see, once again, when he redeemed you at the cross, he wiped your 
or slate cream. Sin is always referred to as a sickness. Sin is always referred to as a disease. So when God cleaned you up spiritually, he wiped away those diseases. What disease? The disease of adultery. The disease of fornication. The disease of lying. The disease of backbiting. The, the disease of not doing what God called you to do. God has wiped away all of your diseases. But what about the physical? When is God going to get can have me perfectly healed? I believe, like some preachers told me on, on the television, that I should be physically healed today. Well, let me tell you something. If you, As long as you live on this planet, you're going to suffer some type of sickness some way, somehow. Some of us are going to have a lot of sickness. Some of us are not going to have that much sickness. But your body is going to be attacked. Whether it's going to be attacked with old age, whether it's going to be attacked with natural, we call natural causes, you've got to leave this planet one way or the other. So eventually, when he talks about physical healing, you will be totally and physically healed when you get to heaven. Oh, no, no, so you don't even like that. You don't even like that. I want you to say, Reverend, when service over, you're going to lay hands on me so I can be totally healed today. So what? So you can go out and still smoke again? So, so you can go out and still eat, overeat again? So you, can, you want to be totally healed so you can go shack up again? So you can go sin again? No. You better thank God that one of these days we're going to shed this body, this sinful body, and put on a body that will never sin. That will never go against God. That will never sin against God. One of these days, and it won't be long, you're going to get a brand new body that you ain't got to worry about sin anymore. Oh, yeah, so yes, he will heal you. Here, look at the third one. Look at the fourth one. He says this in our fourth, 4A, the kernel of redemption, who redeems your life from, now, I think the King James Version says the pit. New King James Version says, who redeems your life from destruction. So let me tell you what the pit is and destruction. That's hell. So, who redeems your life from hell. God saved you from a burning hell. Did you know that? Who don't want to bless God? I can shout off that all day long by itself. It says he saved me, he redeemed me from hell, from the pit. So listen, we were on our way to hell. God stopped you, snatched you out of the fires of hell. You put your faith in Jesus Christ at the cross, and now you're on your way to heaven. Now listen, listen, you, you people, we need to stop saying, and people, for some reason, they think that we believe we're perfect. That's why we're going to heaven. You're not going to heaven because you're perfect, because ain't nothing perfect about us, right? We, we sin almost every day, if not every day, either in mind, deed, something we did wrong. There's something we were, so watch this. God covered our sins so much that he saved us from a burning hell, and he's allowing us to go into heaven, not what you have done, but based on what his son has done. All you got to do is put your faith and live according to his word. Now God know you're going to mess up. God know we're going to fail sometimes, but God is looking at the heart. He's looking at your intent. Why did you fall? Why are you sinning? Why are you still caught up in this sin opposed to that sin? If it's because you think you're getting away with something, because I heard people say, well, I can do this because God going to forgive me anyway. See, that kind of person not saved anyway. When he says he saved you from the pit of hell, he's talking about you understanding that you are on your way to hell. You got stopped that process because you put your faith in Jesus Christ. So don't we serve a good God that he can redeem us from the pit, redeem us out of hell. Listen to this. Then the next one says this. He goes on to another one. He says uh, in verse for again, not only did he redeem us from him, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. All I got to say about that is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That mercy, 
The mercy. Do you know God gives you mercy every day? God overshadows you with mercy. And you know what? We, you know many of us should be dead sleeping in our graves. We know we should have been gone a long time ago. But because of his mercy, because of his grace, God saw fit to allow you to sit here one more time. So he redeems us. When, 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 when David saw this, when David saw, saw God doing this for him, it was because he was being separate. He was being uh, really chased by King Saul. Remember that? David is remembering how God delivered him, how God redeemed him. It was David who said he was, he once remembered that it was a lion that tried to attack the sheep. He remembered God delivered him from a lion and God delivered him from a bear. It was David who said it was God who delivered him out of the Philistines' hands. It was David who said it was God who delivered him out of Saul's hand. What can you remember in your life that God delivered you from? What is it that God pulled you away from? What is it that God set you free from? You need to keep that in your memory and say, God is a good God. God is a great God. I remember if you would have met me 10 years ago, I was this kind of person. But because I found Jesus, because I lined up with his word, now I'm this person. Now you better be careful about that person that told you that they in church for 20 and 30 years and you 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 mess with them the wrong way, they're gonna lay their religion down. I'm gonna lay my religion down. Rev, turn your head, because I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna lay my religion down. I'll pick it back up again, but I'm gonna lay it down so I can go off on her in a minute. Because you know I'm about to take the shoes off, the earrings off, and we about to go right in the church, right in the front. I'm telling you, I see it happen. I see folks fighting in the middle of the service, act like they never met Jesus before in the day of their life. That's because if you got a religion you can lay down, you ain't got a religion at all. If you got a religion you can lay down and pick up, if God is the type of God you can turn on and turn off like a faucet, you ain't got God at all. You need to have a God that made a change in your life. And even though somebody made you upset, you now know 10 years later how to deal with that person that made you upset. See, you know, you would have met me 10 years ago, I would have been upside your head. But since I know Jesus, it's 10 years later now, he taught me how to put down the brick and he taught me how to pick up the Bible. See, that's what you should be saying. Because we know how you used to be. We know you can cuss folks out. We know how we used to be out there in the world. But you shouldn't be that kind of person 25 years later. You should be a new creature created in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What growth has happened in your life since you found Jesus? That's what he said. Has he redeemed you? Last, last but not least, watch says, I love this one, last verse. He says, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. You know, in verse 5, he says, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. You know, this reminds me of the Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus said in Matthew 5, says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Uh, King James Version says, feel. There's a great paradox here. So, we're satisfied and not satisfied at the same time. What do you mean? What do you mean? Okay, watch this. My wife makes the, the, the best, I believe, the best sweet potato pie in the world. Now, see, so I can eat the sweet potato pie and be satisfied. But yet, I'm not satisfied because I'm asking, can you make another one? <laughs> can, can you make another one and another one? So you can eat something, be satisfied for a moment, and then still not be satisfied because you're craving for it another time. He said, that's where you should be for righteousness. That's the way you should be. You know what? Yeah, I, I thank God for the righteousness, but I want more. I thank God for delivering me, but I got to live for him more. I thank God for blessing me, but I got to live for him more. What is the more? I'm hungry. I'm thirsty after his righteousness. I'm satisfied that he saved me, but I'm not satisfied because I still keep falling sometimes. So I keep searching. I keep looking. I keep hungering. I keep thirsty after his righteousness. And if you don't eat the word of God, if you don't drink of the word of God, you're going to starve yourself spiritually to death. So in other words, how 
How is it that you know you eat yourself physically to keep yourself alive? How is it that you don't eat of the word of God? You can spiritually die if you don't eat of the word of God. Eat of the word of God. Each and every day that your soul may be satisfied. Listen to this. Psalms 107 and 9 says this. He has satisfied the thirsty soul and the hungry soul. He has filled with what is Good. But that's not the end. In verse 5, he says this, the eagle, uh, the eagle, you shall be renewed, your youth shall be renewed like the eagle. There's three things about the eagle you need to know. It's size, it's strength, and it's longevity. And you need to know that it sheds once a year. It sheds all of its, he says, you're just like the eagle. So that means this. If we're just like the eagle, then that means we need to know that God is always going to increase you. He's always going to cause you to grow in size. He always will strengthen you, and he's going to give you longevity. That's your spiritual life. Some of us may live physically long, but he's really referring to your longevity. But notice else about this eagle. It sheds once a year. That means every year you need a revival in your life. So you can shed some of the sins that you've been doing each and every year. Yeah, yeah. You need to shed some of the things that you know was wrong. Every year, you need to look back once again, going back to verse 1. Talk to yourself so you can encourage yourself. You got to get rid of some of the stuff that you know that you're involved in because when you bless the Lord, oh my soul, then that's when you'll know that God has been good to you. Listen to this. No, no wonder the psalmist said this. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all all that is within me, bless his holy name. So what does it mean to bless the Lord? You need to bless the Lord because he first blessed you. You need to bless the Lord because it was him who woke you up this morning. Let other people forsake God, but you can continue to bless the Lord. Let other people murmur and complain about God, but you continue to bless him. Let other people complain about their lifestyle, but you continually bless him. Bless the Lord. Why? Because he first blessed you. How did he bless you? Well, over 2,000 years ago, God sent his son Jesus to come down 42 generations. And when he came down 42 generations, he was born of a virgin named Mary. When he was born of a virgin named Mary, it was Jesus who healed the sick. It was Jesus who raised the dead. It was Jesus who taught us how we can live in the kingdom of God. It was Jesus who taught us how to bless God. It was Jesus who taught us how to say thank you Lord but one more time you got to bless the Lord how are you going to bless him are you going to tell him thank you are you going to tell him God you've been good to me are you going to open up your mouth and tell him Lord I love you Lord I'm going to live for you bless the Lord because he first blessed you bless the Lord because you found out that he saved your soul you found out that the Lord made a way for a long time ago and uh, you found out that God is a good God he blessed you when you woke up this morning he put you in your right mind bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name can you say this with me I bless you Lord come on everybody stand on your feet on this Thanksgiving Sunday and say Lord thank you Tell the Lord thank you. Somebody grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him God is good all the time. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. He blessed you when you didn't even see the blessing coming. He blessed you when you was lost in your sins. He blessed you when you were still hanging out in the club. He blessed you when you were high off your drugs. He blessed you when you were sleeping on somebody else's spot. He blessed you when you lied on your taxes. He blessed you when you were in deep in your sin. And now you found out that the Lord's been good. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. bless you Lord, because you first blessed me, but the story don't end right there, the Bible says he died on Calvary over 2,000 years ago, but he didn't stay dead, he got up on the early one Sunday morning, with all power in heaven and earth in his hands, somebody said thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless the Lord, because he first blessed.
Yes, do. Come on. Let's do this together. Give God the praise and glory. He first bless you. Yes. Give God the praise. Let us bow our hands for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you.